good afternoon all let us continue our learning of the subject big data analytics today's uh, topic under discussion is hadoop io from unit 2 so we'll be learning about data integrity and hadoop compression all the contents for today's session are derived from this prescribed textbook by tom white hadoop the definitive guide so as you can see here hadoop input output it uses a set of primitives now io is data transfer data input data output now always there is a chance that data getting corrupted now this detection of this corrupt data is the job of checksum so how i identify data is corrupted if there is a mismatch of generated checksum with the original one so but you have to also remember that checksum is error detection not correction the most commonly used checksum technique or checksum error detection code is crc32 32 bit cyclic redundancy check so it computes a 32 bit integer checksum for the input of any size so crc32 is used for checksum in hadoop's checksum file system hdfs uses a more efficient variant called crc 32c now how data integrity in hdfs hdfs is achieved so hdfs checks data checksums for all the data a separate checksum is created for every dfs dot bytes per checksum byte of data the default size is 512 bytes and a crc 32c is 4 bytes so the overhead is less than 1% uh data nodes usually verify the data before they receive or before they want to store so this applies for both the data received from the client and from other data nodes also the client will be sending the data across data node pipeline and in the data node pipeline the end data node means the last data node in the pipeline it will be verifying the checksum if there is an error then io exception subclass is issued to the client the client too will be verifying the checksum so the data node will have a log of checksum verification whenever a client successfully verifies a block it will be telling the data node the data node in turn will be updating its log the data node also runs something called as data block scanner in the background thread which periodically verifies all the block stored on the data node so this is for what to avoid bit rot in the physical storage medium hdfs we know use the replication factor by default of 3 means each block we can assume will be having three replicas including the original so if there is a corrupt block what will happen there may be good replicas right so from those good replicas we will be producing a new uncorrupted replica for the one which is corrupted how it happens the client reports that there is a bad block and uh, it will be telling that to one and all and it will be throwing a checksum exception the name node records this as corrupt the name node then schedules a copy of the block to be replicated on another data node 
the corrupt replica there is de deleted so you can also disable verification of checksum by setting false to set verify checksum method coming to local file system what the local file system in hadoop does it will be checking the checksum on the client side so it means whenever you create a file a hidden file dot file name dot crc is automatically created the size is determined by files dot bytes per checksum property by default it is 512 bytes this size is stored as metadata in dot crc file so that reading back that block is easier the checksums are verified when the file is read if there is an error checksum i checksum exception is thrown by local file system now coming to checksum file system this is a class which will be used by local file system it becomes easier to add check summing so basically what happens is you have a wrapper of check sum on the raw file if there is an error uh, found out by the check sum file system it will call its report check sum failure method Now let us come to the next topic: compression. What are the benefits of compression? It will be reducing the space, and it will speed up data transfer. These are few of the compression formats offered in Hadoop ecosystem: Diffflet, Zzip, Bzip2, Lzo, Lz4, Snappy. so you have tools for zzip bz2 and lz2 by name lz2 p the algorithm names and the compression formats are similar if you look at the extensions also they are again self explanatory different as dot diffflet zzip has dot zz bzip2 has dot bz2 lz2 has dot lz2 lz4 has dot lz4 snappy has dot snappy so you can see splitable properties with bz bzip2 while for lz2 it is splitable if there is have been index in a pre processing steps so any compression algorithm has to go for this space time trade off if the speed is faster uh, less space saving happens but the tools mentioned here are kind of a balancers optimizers because there are different options say for example if i select an option minus 1 uh, speed optimization happens if i select minus 9 space optimizer you can give this kind of command zz zzip minus 1 file so it will be zipping a file by name file dot zz using the fastest compression method zzip is general purpose compressor and it sits in the middle of the space time trade off bzip2 is better than zzip but slower decompression speed of bzip2 is faster than its compression speed lz0 lz4 snappy all optimize for speed but compress less effective snappy and lz4 are faster than lz0 for decompression what are codex their implementation of compression decompression algorithm in hadoop it is happened through compression codec interface these are the formats for codex diffflet zzip bzip zip2 lz0 lz4 snappy 
if you look at LZO libraries, their GPL license. Uh, if you look at LZ LZOP codec, which is compatible with LZOP tool, it uses LZO format with extra headers. There is also LZO codec for the pure LZO format. So let us continue our learning. 